Hey, Linda. Hey, Andrew. Uh, I've been listening to you for quite a while now, and I'm very close to you. (laughs) Yes, you Uh, are. uh, Yes, uh, right. Uh, Anyway, I... Um, I've been going to, uh, it's a non-denominational church here in mm. Midland yes. that I've been going to for a very long time. Okay. And, uh, okay, so we haven't had uh, actual church services in our, uh, for quite a while since coronavirus. So I listen to you, and then I, I watch our, uh, our service. And... Um, I believe it was last Sunday. I, I'm, I'm just, I mean, things are just start. I'm starting to ask questions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I heard this, and this was from one of our pastors. I think we have like three, and this is one was from one of our younger ones. And this was basically what it was. And this was the first question that was asked, and it just kind of jumped out at me. Um, why do we expect things in our life to submit to our prayers when we ourselves are not submitted totally to Jesus. Okay. All right. Well, let me speak to that, uh, Linda. And by the way, we've got a couple open lines now. uh, So there's room for you to get in here at the end of the broadcast. We've got about 10 minutes left with three open lines. So encourage you to get in here. Uh, and the number 877-956-9566. Linda, uh, appreciate your encouraging words. They're so glad you're connected with us there in Midland, Texas, just, uh, well, a couple of hours away from our location. So we'll leave the light on for you. We hope you come visit our fellowship here sometime. Check us out on a Sunday morning. I'd love to meet you. But as far as your question, I mean, it sounds to me and the little bit that you've shared with me there, uh, how do we expect our our circumstances to submit to our prayers? Well, let's examine that statement. I mean, I don't expect my circumstances to submit to my prayers. I expect them to submit to my God. And so it just seems to me like we're putting prayer as the object of our faith instead of God in that instance. Now, I want to leave a little room. I don't know. I haven't heard the message. I mean, you're giving me a single quote or a a statement to work with here, but uh, I'm sure there's great intent on the other side of that. But my point is uh, our prayers are, are, are not in a vacuum. It's dialogue with God. God is is the interlocutor. God is the one who's responding. God is the one who's conversing uh, with us. And we need to remember that because we submit to him. So uh, also, the second half of that sort of implies this. If I were more submissive, if I were more obedient, if I were more dedicated, if I were more committed, then I would get what I ask for. Do you hear that? That is the statement ultimately where it's headed. If I did my part, then I would get more stuff from God that I requested from him. If he looked down and he saw my shining behavior, if he saw my stellar performance, if he saw my commitment and my dedication and, and my consistency and my obedience, then he would say, Andrew, I have seen what you've done. Therefore, here's all the answers to your request. So I would be earning prayer requests through performance. And I got to say, I'm not surprised by what you heard there. I'm not because it's basically the modern day church type message that you hear in so many places all over this planet. And it's just man-made religion. If you do your part, God will do his. Um, You know, pagans believed that if you march around this campfire, you'll get a good crop this year. If you do your part, if you're obedient, if you initiate, then God will look down, pleased his punch at you, and he'll give you a bunch of stuff that you want, including a lot of rain, a good abundant crop this year, and a good hunting season, and you name it. I mean, that sort of philosophy 
where you're earning and achieving and getting the answers to your requests through your performance, it's been around for thousands of years. Now again, is it uncommon for people to throw a Jesus stamp on that philosophy and call it a, a Christian message? No, it's not uncommon. I've heard it for decades. And honestly, I don't believe that those messengers even realize they're doing it. They just don't know any better. They're not acquainted with the difference between law and grace. Law says do, grace says done. Law says you do your part, God will do his. Grace says no, God did his part first. So now you can live in response to what he already did. He's not going to give you his favor later. He gave it to you in Christ, at, blessed with every spiritual blessing. He, he's not going to award you goodies at the end. No, you have everything you need for life and godliness up front right now on day one of salvation. So quite candidly, the problem is people just don't know that they're complete in Christ. They don't know how good the gospel is. They don't know how much they've been given at new birth. They're still playing this law-based game. And if it, it ultimately is, if you do, then God will do. Well, the New Covenant message, the New Testament proclamation is, God already did, and it's finished. Jesus won't hang on a cross again. He won't rise out of that grave again. It's over. It worked the first time. It is finished. Therefore, count yourself dead to sin. Therefore, count yourself alive to God. You're alive. You're complete. You're connected. You're blessed. You have every spiritual blessing. Jesus is enough, and you've got him. You'll never hunger. You'll never thirst. And so you don't run around performing to try to get him to hear you. You don't run around performing to try to get your prayers answered. So it's not grace. It's law that is being taught there. And... Uh, well, I don't know how to put it any other way, but uh, I hope that gives you a little bit of discernment. I am not saying you need to overreact to that. I am not saying you need to make some rash decision about that. I'm just saying for your own sake and your own discernment of the truth, uh, you need to call a spade a spade and recognize that you're not going to get more prayers answered if you run out and work for God first. So, Linda, thanks for your call today. Uh, come visit us anytime. We'd love to see you. And uh, reach out again on the radio here anytime. Call us back.